Good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here in the historical opening of the Ocean Conference that happened today. Um, I'm going to give the floor first to the two co-presidents of the conference. Uh, in first will be the Prime Minister of Fiji that will deliver a brief statement. We will have the four statements, one of the two co-presidents, one of the President of the General Assembly, and of the Secretary of the conference, and then we will take questions from all of you. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. The floor is yours. Thank you, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the ocean. Bulavinaka, and uh, welcome to this briefing. Today marks an uh, important chapter in the history of the United Nations because the ocean is taking center stage here for the first time ever. I am deeply gratified by your presence here and by the large number of delegations present from government, the civil society, the private sector, the scientific community, uh, philanthropy and uh, academia and the many people who are simply committed to the ocean and who have joined us here this week. Congratulations to all of you for being part of this historic occasion. Our goal is uh, not just to talk about how we can save the ocean from its current uh, deterioration, but how we as humanity can commit ourselves to concrete actions to improve the health of the Earth's ocean and sustain it for uh, posterity. I'm particularly proud, as Prime Minister of Fiji, to be co-president of this conference alongside the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden, Ms. Uh, Isabella Lovin. As a Fijian and a Pacific Islander, my life is uh, intimately and intricately bound with the ocean, as are the lives of uh, all Fijians. The ocean defines us and our country. We have an intimate uh, relationship to the ocean. It gives us sustenance and comfort in its vastness, in its color, and in the life it nurtures and sustains. For centuries, it was our only highway to, the, to other lands. So we feel the ocean deep within us, but it is no less important in some way to everyone on Earth, even people who live thousands of kilometers from the nearest ocean and have never known the wonderful smell of the sea. The ocean conference that begins uh, today has been a long time coming. Every human-induced problem will require commitment by human beings to correct it. We are stewards of our Earth and our oceans, and this is our moral duty to ourselves and future generations. It is our solemn responsibility to the other living things on this planet, the plants and the animals, the corals and fish, the birds and reptiles, and the rare creatures living at the bottom of the deeper oceans, uh, ocean trenches that have yet to be discovered. They are blameless. So we are gathered here this week, Your Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for ourselves and our children, and for them to organize uh, ourselves, coordinate our efforts, and make a firm commitment. The ocean will be returned to health when government when civil society, when the private sector, the UN system, and every individual who consumes a fish or discards a plastic bottle understands how his or her action affects the ocean. We are all in this together, all of uh, humanity, and we must all be a part of the solution. By the conclusion of this conference this week, General Assembly Resolution 70-303 mandates that the conference will be adopting three substantive outcomes, a political declaration, a call for action, a summary of the partnership dialogue, and a list of voluntary commitments, all which are very important. In the call for action, the negotiations for the call, of action, call for action have concluded, and now we have a focused and concise political declaration that can mo mobilize action on behalf of uh, our oceans all over the world. It also constitutes our work plan for the next phase of the implementation of uh, SDG 14. And I want to thank uh, the uh, co-facilitators of the call for action, the permanent representative of Portugal and Singapore for their efforts in bringing about consensus on this important document. The summary of the partnership dialogue will be an equally important outcome for, of this meeting. It will be a summary of each of the seven interactive 
and multi-stakeholder dialogues in which participants will discuss real issues and share practical experiences and solutions, all aimed at addressing the specific issues under the targets of SDG 14. We have access to the best signs available to tell us about the current state of the ocean, and we will learn about remedies, adaptations, and solutions that have been successful in different parts of the world. We are relying on the co-chairs of the seven partnership dialogues to capture these important discussions for us. In voluntary commitment, we should all be inspired by the current number of voluntary commitment. The rest of you who care about the ocean and want to take positive action have four more days, four more days to register those commitments and be part of this important movement. The list of the conference uh, closes on the 9th of June, so please register your voluntary commitment. These outcomes uh, will, only be, will also provide timely input to the in-depth follow-up and review of SDG 14 at a high-level political forum next month in July. Since the adoption of the 2030 agenda, no other SDG will have been the subject of a global conversation as thorough and, uh, and a commitment as strong as SDG 14 on sustainable use of the Earth's ocean. We now have finally found the momentum and the strength and the courage to take action on our oceans. We can all make an unshakable commitment uh, to the health of the ocean by agreeing on actions at this first UN uh, conference and committing ourselves to execute those actions, to review our progress, and to continually reconfirm our pledges for the ocean's health. That will produce a faithful implementation of SDG 14 and the 2030 agenda. Thank you for your attention and Vinagabagalevo. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister. And I now give the floor to Her Excellency, Ms. Isabella Lovin, Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden. Thank you very much, and welcome to you all to this press briefing. Uh, I think my colleague, the, the Prime Minister of Fiji, has uh, said most things that are important about this conference, so I'll be very brief. I'm really proud that Sweden and Fiji have come together to co-host this first ever UN conference on the oceans. And even if we're very, very far apart, geographically, uh, culturally even, uh, on op opposite sides of the planet, we share our common concern and our passion to really uh, address the threats of our oceans that are existential, not only to our, our countries or our people or our children, but actually for the entire planet. And I think what we've heard during this uh, morning with the st statements, not least from small uh, developing island states, is really confirmed the sense of urgency that people that are dependent, directly dependent on the oceans for livelihoods and survival feel at this moment. <coughs> and this is the first time the global community has come together after last week when we had uh, the, the, I would say, very regrettable decision from uh, the United States to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. And I think uh, the linkage between the effects of climate change to healthy or the threats of our oceans is more than clear to all of us here, that gather here at the UN. And one of the sub-targets uh, for the SDG 14 is actually reducing the impacts of climate change on our oceans. And climate change is really taking a real harsh toll on our oceans, uh, making them much, much warmer, more acidic, uh, changing the patterns of some of the ecosystems there, and some are even threatened. And we believe that uh, coral reefs will have a very, very uh, uh, harsh time surviving, uh, and researchers are predicting that by 2050, most of them will not exist anymore. So. It's really acute that we act now. And uh, this gathering here, uh, it's the first, as my, my, my colleague, the Prime Minister from Fiji said, this is the first time ever the world is gathering around one specific SDG. And I don't think it's a coincidence that it is SDG 14, because the trends are all going in the wrong direction uh, concerning this SDG. We're seeing an increasing uh, overfishing and the marine litter that is getting into our oceans. Everything accumulated 
really uh, is constituting a threat to our oceans that we cannot neglect. And um, the outcome of this conference, um, we of course have the, uh, the call for action, but not least uh, the partnership dialogues would be extremely important where we're expecting to see uh, the, what needs to be done and also new partnerships forming. So who is going to do what and what are the resources that are lacking? And I'd like to see the outcome as a sort of a to-do list for the world. And we, the developed countries, we also have an obligation and a responsibility to support developing countries uh, to, for, for them to have the available resources to, to manage sustainably their own uh, marine resources. Many of the countries are small, the small developing island states are in fact big ocean states. But we also need to make sure that uh, we have uh, cooperation so that uh, it's possible to, to sustainably manage and protect uh, waters, both in EEZs and outside. And um, that is basically why we're here. Uh, I think the momentum is absolutely uh, here, and uh, we are looking forward to um, this as the starting point of a process, not the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Prime Minister. <clears throat> now I give the floor to her, His Excellency, Mr. Peter Thompson, President of the UN General Assembly. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, good afternoon, I guess it is now, everybody. Uh, I really want to congratulate the governments of Sweden and Fiji for their <coughs> perseverance and uh, incredible dedication over the last couple of years in getting us to where we are today. Um, uh, the uh, partnership between an, uh, a developed country from the Northern Hemisphere and a developing country from the other side of the world in the Southern Hemisphere uh, just shows you how, first of all, how universal the SDG 14 is. In fact, the whole agenda is, of course. But uh, here we see that the ocean ties together uh, everybody, wherever we live, in the north and the south, or whether we're developed or developing, and that we're all in this together. I also wanted to uh, really congratulate Prime Minister of Fiji for uh, assuming the, uh, the great responsibility of presiding over COP23, beginning later this year. Climate change and ocean action, these are the two existential uh, challenges for humanity in the 21st century. And uh, why uh, is Fiji doing it as a specific small island developing state? It's because uh, we recognize that this is uh, what is really uh, challenging humanity in this century, not short-term problems. So um, congratulations to Fiji on that. While I'm just thanking Fiji, I want to mention the Fijian cultural ceremony, which I think you saw this morning. Uh, and I don't think everybody realized when that was taking place that all of those cultural performers are UN peacekeepers. They've all served, many of them, several times in the blue helmet in the troubled spots of the world. So again, uh, thanks and congratulations to Fiji. As I said in my address this morning, our task here at the conference is to support the uh, implementation of SDG 14, to make sure that our ocean's goal is getting the, the support it needs going forwards. And uh, when I say support, it's not the usual bleat about financing. I'm talking about all of us, all of humanity, civil society, governments, UN system, uh, private sector, scientific community, all getting together and giving the, su the support needed to turn around that cycle of decline into which we have put the ocean. So we're here to uh, hear the truth uh, from global authorities, and I do encourage you all in the media to go and, uh, and, and sit in on those partnership dialogues, get to as many of the 160-odd side events that are happening, hear the uh, dialogue that's going on, because that's where the solutions are really coming. And then, of course, we've got to act on them. Going forward to 2020, going forward to 2025, and 2030, which are the three way stations when the targets of the SDG 14 mature. So uh, we've got it all ahead of us. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. I know Mr. Wu has to say something, but I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. And now I give the floor to the Secretary General of the Conference, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, Mr. Wu. Ladies and gentlemen, my job is really challenging because a lot of ground has been covered by the previous speakers. 
I promise you I will be very brief. Uh, first of all, uh, the first ever United Nations Conference on Ocean has taken off this morning. It has been successful, and we congratulate all of us for working together for this conference. Secondly, I would like to, on behalf of the Secretariat, uh, express our deep appreciation to our co-hosts of the conference, Fiji and Sweden. And also, I would like to mention particularly the leadership and the guidance of President of the General Assembly, Ambassador Peter Thompson. And you have led us to wh where we are today. As the Secret Secretariat, um, we have been working together with the teams from Sweden and the Fiji. We have been working very closely and successfully. We thank their team and their colleagues. Talking about the, the results of this conference, I, I think that uh, the um, previous speakers mentioned, um, first is negotiated a document, call for action. And we are going to see 22 specific actions to be taken by the international community. We look forward for that. Without a con consensus or uh, adoption of the conference, I will not go any further to identify them. Sorry for that. Secondly, about the voluntary commitments. Yesterday, was, I was given a figure of 400. Now that jumped to close to 750. I'm expecting a more a voluntary commitments to be made by the participants, basically made by the governments. This is very encouraging. Certainly, my colleagues who work with all of this, any important messages emerging from the discussions will be included in the final statement. That will be shared with all the participants. So with that, I would like to thank you again and I hope that all of us will work together to take action now to save our ocean. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wu. We have time for about three questions. However, please, I want to share with you that there will be plenty of occasions during the week. The President of the General Assembly, the Secretary General of the Conference, many of the f dialogue facilitators will be attending the 12.30 briefing. So you will have also other occasions to, to, to pose questions. Please. And if you can please introduce yourself and then also um, indicate who do you want the question to be answered. I have a question for President Thompson. Is the implementation of the Paris Agreement included in the topic of the Ocean Conference? How do you evaluate its significance to the ocean's management? Thank you. Yes, I don't think we can go through this conference without equating uh, ocean action to climate action. Uh, and obviously, for de as I said in my speech this morning, fidelity to the SDG 14 and the 2030 Agenda and to the Paris Climate Agreement are both uh, essential tasks for humanity at the moment. The great news is, of course, the great mass of humanity, the great mass of governments are uh, fully in support of those uh, two measures. So uh, in terms of why are climate and ocean so directly related, I'll just give you a f very simple examples. Uh, uh, for example, ocean acidification. You know, under which it may not be possible for calcium-based life such as vertebrates and shellfish uh, to survive in the future uh, is related to the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, which is you know, produced by human activity, industrial actions, and so on. So uh, ocean acidification is, is an obvious one. But also think about rising sea levels. This is because of the warming of the atmosphere, climate change, which is causing H2O, the water of the ocean, to expand up to 40% of the reasons for the sea levels coming up and flooding all our coastlines and in some cases countries is due to uh, climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you very much. My name is Abdul Hamid Sayam from the Arabic Daily Al Quds Al Arabi, and my question is the Deputy Prime Minister of Sweden. What do you think of the withdrawal of the United States from the uh, Paris uh, Agreement about climate change? How did that that would affect? the health of oceans. Thank you very much. Um, 
Of course, we regret that the U.S. would uh, withdraw from the Paris Agreement. However, I also recognize that there's many, many uh, states and cities in the United States and also um, private sector and, and enterprises that are really committed to the Paris Agreement. So I, I, I hope uh, that the development will uh, still be positive when it comes to uh, a carbon-free future. However, if, if we don't act now um, and make this transition to a carbon-free future, then the oceans will be one of the worst victims of, of climate change. And as uh, the President of the General Assembly just mentioned, ocean acidification is just one example where the, uh, the biochemistry of our oceans has changed during a, such, a, such a short period evolutionarily uh, of the planet that it's really very, very hard for the organisms to, to adjust and cope with this. And we're seeing the effects on coral reefs and on, on shellfish and, and even on small micro zooplankton that will not survive in a more acidic uh, ocean. So uh, we, of course, uh, encourage everyone to stay committed to the Paris Agreement and, and uh, also heighten the ambitions because we can't lower them now. We have to really have stronger ambitions and stronger commitment to the Paris Agreement now. Thank you very much. My question is for all of you. So how can the call for action and the voluntary commitment can change uh, the current scenario of the oceans and how it can change the future of the ocean and the relation with humans? Thank you. Well, um, as I mentioned at the call for action, there are 22 specific actions to be taken, not by only a few countries, but the international community, and also the voluntary um, commitments. Uh, we are planning to have a follow-up of the conference. So um, actions to be taken would be considered as a part of the overall implementation efforts for the Agenda 2030. So they will be reviewed uh, in the high-level political forum. As far as the voluntary commitments concerned, they will be um, on the website, and then people will uh, look at it, and they will um, follow up the implementation process. I, I think that this is something we trying to do. We hope all the commitment commitments will be honored, and the actions will be taken in time to save our oceans. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, well, last question because we really are beyond time. James Lyle from News Earth Journalism Network. Uh, fishing fishing subsidy, subsidies have been identified as one of the most damaging things for the oceans and for fish stocks. Is there going to be any discussion of efforts to reduce fishing subsidies here at the conference? And if so, what forums, what dialogues will that take place? Well, um, obviously, uh, destructive fishing subsidies so that contribute to overfishing or illegal fisheries, that is one thing that should be phased out or should be abolished totally, of course. And it's part of the partnership dialogue on sustainable fisheries. Uh, however, the, the venue for negotiations is the WTO as we all know, but this is one important uh, sub-target of uh, the SDG 14 that needs to be addressed. I can just uh, respond to those two questions that were asked there. Uh, also, um, just to refer you to SDG 14, there's firm language in there about fisheries subsidies, so that's, that's set in concrete. Uh, as the Minister said, uh, Deputy Prime Minister said, uh, the WTO is where the decisions will be made. Uh, there's a ministerial meeting happening in Buenos Aires in December uh, of the WTO. Our uh, big aim here is to put some positive wind in the sails of the delegations that are going down to Buenos Aires in December on fisheries subsidies. So there will be a statement? <coughs> there will be. I mean, the partnership dialogue on, on fisheries, okay. uh, if you're interested in that subject, make sure you're there. We'll cover fisheries subsidies, amongst other things. And just to add to what Mr. Wu said, uh, I think when you're talking about follow-up action from this conference, 
this is not just about UN uh, bureaucrats or government officials or taking action. This is about all of us are in this. This is why there's 1,600 CSOs and NGOs here. This, this, this movement to reverse the cycle of decline that humanity has put the ocean into is not going to be achieved by us. It's, got, it's everybody that's in this. So I think that's the central message that I want to leave you with, that this is uh, something for humanity as a whole, and uh, we at the United Nations and the governments and everywhere are all going to be working together on this over the next three years between now and when we reconvene, and hopefully in 2020. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister of Fiji had to leave because he had a commitment and he was running late. Thank you, Deputy Prime Minister. Thank you, President of the General Assembly. Thank you, USG. Well, there will be, as I said, plenty of opportunities for media today at 2.30 with the Deputy Secretary General and every day at 12.30 at the noon briefing room. Thank you very much.